name is John Harkless and I am a PhD theoretical chemist. For the uninitiated, chemistry is the science that's concerned with the organization, characterization, and manipulation of matter. As a theoretical chemist, I develop the rules and models that help explain how the science actually works. So when people go and try something out, they have some sort of guidelines in place to help them think about what they should expect to see. Now, I got interested in chemistry at a pretty young age. I was always curious about how stuff was made, how things work, how it's all put together. And because chemistry takes advantage of a lot of those ideas, I was really strongly drawn to it. So I did my K through 12 education in the public schools of Jackson, Mississippi. Afterwards, I went to Morehouse College where I graduated with a double major in mathematics and chemistry, earning a bachelor's of science and joining Phi Beta Kappa, as well as getting the opportunity to go lots of places that I might not have thought about had I not been a part of that scientific community with that really strong encouragement and strong support. Once I completed college, I went to graduate school at the University of California, Berkeley, where I was able to complete that PhD work. And since then, I have gone on to have a really great time doing chemistry in a lot of different places with a lot of different people. And you'll be able to see some of the output of that when you check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel. This is a sped up version of a video showing the kitchen chemistry necessary to make mayonnaise in only two minutes. It's actually pretty simple, but it's an excellent example of emulsification. This video is inspired by my sister who also has a chemistry degree. She came up with a way to clean copper jewelry using lemon juice and regular table salt. Really clever and I was glad to help. This third one is everyone's favorite. It stars my father and I'm just helping. We were cleaning some silver jewelry and despite some magnificent side eye on his part, everything worked out perfectly and it was actually a lot of fun. One in particular that I think you'll find interesting and I'm told is pretty age appropriate is about polarization. And it's the idea that the light we get coming at us from the sun or even from, say, our light bulbs and such, well, that light is uh, kind of randomized. And what polarization can do is help narrow down some of that randomization and we'll have some ideas for things you can do to test out to see whether or not what I'm telling you, in theory, actually works in practice. Okay, so uh, I'm at home again and that's my dad. You can say hi. Hello, hello. Okay. We are happy to have you here with us in the South. <laughs> so, uh, what I decided to do was actually demonstrate how light works with polarized lenses. So, if you have sunglasses, they uh, help block out some of the light. But if you have polarized lenses, uh, the light that goes in and it goes in all directions the polarized lens will only let some of it come through and what that means is you can take a second set of polarized lenses and you can actually play with it to make everything go dark so what you should see is uh so did it go black? yes I disappeared <laughs> Oh, there I am. And it's back again. So, if we wanted to get a close-up, we'll take a close-up. We'll have to work together. So, if we take a close-up, you can see it goes completely black. And then, as you turn it and line them up, you can see through. And so, even if the lens isn't dark, it'll still work. Uh... And that's how your 3D glasses work. And you can also check to see if you're wearing polarized glasses by looking at uh, TV screens or computer screens 
because your flat screen will be a little bit polarized. If you turn your head side to side, the image will actually get darker or lighter. They disappeared. Yep. Huh. And that's because the light that goes through one lens, it's all going in one direction. And so there's nothing to go through the second lens. By George, what a brilliant discovery. <laughs> Pay attention. So, that's that. So a bit more about my background. I'm interested in making people smarter. I'm one of the smart people, but I can't do it alone. Uh, there's a lot of other pieces of science that I just don't really pay that much attention to because it's not that fascinating to me. So we need mathematicians, we need biologists, we need physicists, we need engineers to take these concepts and apply them to man-made systems in the same way that we apply the science to naturally occurring systems. And the only way we do that is by staying curious about how it all works, to keep asking questions. And that part of my background is really what made me into the scientist that I am today by asking lots of questions, by deciding that I really wanted to know how things worked, and that I never really learned that asking why was a bad question. That's how I ended up doing lots and lots of science and ultimately earning the right to keep doing it for as long as I want. And that's what I hope you'll take away from this experience that you've had from watching some of the videos, trying some of these things out, and learning alongside your peers and your teachers. So, in closing, I'm a scientist because I learned how to stay curious and I had lots of really great people supporting me all along the way. And you can learn to be a scientist as well as long as you remember to stay curious and take advantage of all the people who are lined up to help you learn all these things and become one of the smart people too.